Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 animation series. In today's video we are going to be taking a deeper look at animation sequences, the part that they play in the animation process and also taking a deeper look at the animation interface so that we can work with these. So for those of you that don't know what an animation sequence is already, an animation sequence is essentially raw animation data which has been imported in from animation software such as Blender or Maya or so on. And you can tell it's an animation sequence because when you hover over it, it will say it in the top right, but also you are going to have the dark green strip underneath it. If you go ahead and find one of these in your content browser um, inside of the animation starter pack, you are going to be jumped into the animation interface and it's going to look a bit like this. Once again, you are going to be pretty familiar with this interface or most of it because in the past few videos, we've been going through the skeleton tab, the mesh tab and the animation tab and a lot of these elements are going to stay the same. What I'm going to do is take a moment, sort of break all of this down, sort of so you know exactly what's going on. So first things first, you have got your viewport in the center of the screen here, and you can see we have got our uh, skeletal mesh doing an animation. Now as for the animation that this dude is going to be playing, that is going to be determined in the asset browser in the bottom right here. From here, you can choose an animation to preview. For example, I can just click through these, go through the different animations, and as you do that, you are going to notice they are just going to play in your viewport for that. When you click on one of these, you are going to have a little track at the bottom. And what this track is going to allow you to do is to simply sort of go through your animations left and right on this track sort of from start to finish essentially. So if you want to you can see how it looks at 24 frames in and you can move on, it's up to you. From here you have a couple of controls at the bottom uh, to do with this little, um, as I like to call it, sort of like timeline here, you've got a couple of controls that you can work with. You can reverse this, you can skip to the front to previous, you can play, uh, go to the next and you can also tell it to loop or not. So if we click loop, it's going to stop playing it over and over again. Generally, you're going to want to leave that on. There's also a record function, but I'm not going to go into too much detail for that just now. I'm going to leave it where it is. Now with these animations here, you've also got a couple of different things that you can work with. The first one is a notifier, uh, is a notify. So a notify plays a really important role in the animation process, especially when it comes to characters. So let's say we've got this character and he is walking from left to right. A notifier is essentially something that is going to be an event and you can trigger that event at a certain point in the timeline. A place where you might want to use a notifier would be for footstep sounds, for example. So this way, you're going to fire off an event that's going to play a sound when that foot touches the ground. And you can link that up to the exact moment that the foot touches the ground. If you right click on this little notifies tab, you can then add a notify and play a particle effect, play a sound and so on. And we can also link this up to some blueprint stuff later on if you want to, but this is how you would go ahead and add all these sounds and so on. But I'm not gonna go into these notifies in too much detail for now, so I'm just gonna remove that by pressing Control Z. We will dedicate a bit of time to that so we can work with it in a little bit more detail. Moving on from there, we've also got our curves. Our curves are essentially just going to allow us to blend the animations together. I'm not going to cover that in too much detail. Is that something that I want to sort of dedicate like a whole video to later on in the series? Once again, for all of these animations, we've got the details panel on the left hand side. There is quite a lot of settings here. I'm not going to go over these one by one because it's just not necessary at this point and you will pick them up as you go through your animation sort of learning process. What I will do is go through some of the main important ones that you might want to learn about. 
and those are just going to be the rate scale essentially. This is a really important sort of detail that you're going to be changing quite often with your animation. So what the rate scale does is it's essentially going to allow you to change the rate at which this animation plays. So if I go to the bottom right of my timeline here, press play, set my rate scale to 1.5, you can see he moves faster now. So for example, if you've got a walking animation or you've got a running animation and you want to turn that into a sprinting animation, you would duplicate that animation, set the rate scale up so it moves faster and it sort of will look a little bit better there. You've also got a couple of other settings in here, but I don't really want to go over those in too much detail. That is pretty much the main stuff for now. You've also got some preview settings on the right hand side. Um, those ones are just going to be for the viewport essentially. So from here, what you can do is change it to another skeletal mesh if you've got one available. Um, but for now, just leave it the way that it is. Now, what I do want to mention before that I go any further is that this animation interface can also take a look at blend spaces as well. And a blend space is a type of animation asset that is going to allow you to blend animations based on data. So in my asset browser in here, we've got a couple of assets which have this little orange icon next to them. So we've got BS, which stands for blend space, underscore jog. Double click on this. And essentially what you've got is this little frame here where we can blend some animations, but we'll go over that in a little bit more detail in the next video. So what I'm going to do is end the video here. Make sure that you move on to the next video where we cover the two different types of blend spaces, but hopefully you guys are starting to sort of get used to the animation interface. And over time, over the next few videos, we're going to be showing you how to create animation blueprints and bring all of these animation blend spaces and animation sequences to life in a way that you can use them in your game. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.